It's, uh, it's great to be here. Man, those lights. Yeah, you're really sitting there. Um, I'm going to talk about a package called uh, Laravel Data. Who uses already this package? Maybe some of you? Okay, All right. some, people, some people already do. So yeah, you know all of the things that are on this slide already. Um, some of you might not know that I have a blog, freek.dev, where I talk about uh, PHP and Laravel development. And I've been so lucky to work with some wonderful human beings on three SaaS products. The first one is MailCoach, which is a better MailChimp, but targeted to Laravel developers and has an emphasis on privacy. Uh, I've also built uh, Odeo, which is an uptime tracker, but this one doesn't only uh, check the homepage, but will actually crawl your entire site and send you a notification when one of the pages is down. And together with my colleagues, I've built uh, Flare, which is, I think, the best exception tracker for uh, Laravel applications. Now, before heading into the talk, I want to give you a quick update on our open source work. We have about 300 packages now on packages. They are being downloaded for 25 million times a month now, and they have been downloaded now for yeah, 640 million times, which is yeah, kind of amazing, I think. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you'll find a big list of everything that uh, we've done. I'm not going to read all the packages um, on our company website. I'm pretty sure there's something there for your next project. As some of you know, there's, not, uh, they, there's a special license on those packages called postcardware, which means that you have to send us a postcard if uh, you're uh, using uh, our stuff. I'm currently missing about 600 million postcards, so <laughs> just uh, keep, them, keep them coming. Uh, we share those postcards on our virtual postcard wall on our site, so you can enjoy them uh, as well. Now, on, uh, I often get like the question like, Freek, how do you do this, uh, do this work? Because it's so much, you have to create them, you have to maintain uh, the stuff. Uh, I was talking to uh, Jess and Susanna, and they, they asked the same, like, how do you do this? And I said, I'm going to give you the secret on stage. So the big secret, how I do this, is that I don't do this alone. I have an entire team behind me. And I'm very lucky that uh, I could bring some of my colleagues here. They're sitting somewhere there. Could you stand up, guys? Where are they? And let's give them a big round of applause, because they work on the stuff as well. Uh, yeah, there they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about Laravel data. So you might think that at Spassi we only work on open source, but that's not the case, uh, because that doesn't uh, pay all the bills. We work on very big uh, client pro projects and also our own uh, SaaS products as well. And those, uh, those projects, they often have complex data structure. So think of projects that have like hundreds of models with lots of attributes on those models and a lot of relationships uh, between those models. So these are not like uh, smallish applications. And we saw that we had to define a lot of data structures multiple times. So think about like if you want to have a form request for a model, then you have list, then you have to list all of the attributes of the model. And then when you create an API resource, you also have to list all of those attributes again. And if you use something like inertia and you want to have some type safety, you want to create uh, TypeScript definitions for uh, those models as well, and you get like the same list of attributes over and over again. And for a small model that has like maybe 10 properties, this isn't really a problem. But if you have like 50 or 60 attributes or more, yeah, then it really becomes very cumbersome. And that is, what, that is the main problem that we are trying to solve uh, using Laravel data. So using Laravel data, you can create powerful data objects. And a data object is basically a single definition that can be used for multiple purposes. Now, I didn't uh, start creating uh, this package. That is uh, the original author of this is my colleague, uh, Ruben van Asse. And uh, together with uh, feedback of uh, the entire team, this is a really uh, polished uh, package. Now, we uh, have seen a lot of reveals here at Laracon with, uh, yeah, just now with Livewire v3. And you might think that, Live, that Laravel data is a new package, but that isn't the case. 
In fact, I was planning to talk about uh, different uh, stuff here on the stage. I had a couple of ideas, but my colleague said, yeah, maybe Laravel data could be interesting. And I did a poll on Twitter, and it seems like most of you are interested in seeing like a demo of this, uh, this package. So it isn't uh, a new package. It's been around now for two years uh, already. Uh, we use it at every project, and it seems that some of you like it as well because it has uh, just passed the two million download uh, count. So the code is really uh, battle tested here. Okay, in this talk, I'm going to give you like a very simple example of how to use it, and then we're going to move on to a more complex uh, use case so you can see where uh, it really uh, can shine. So let's code a little bit. So I've prepared a little demo application here with all my contacts in our wonderful Laravel ecosystem. You might know some of, uh, of these people here. Uh, I don't know if the, these email addresses work, but they, in, uh, they look nice. And this application, uh, yeah, it only has this list. And if I click one, uh, then I can see detail page. And of course, I can uh, change stuff. I can, uh, can save this. Okay, let's go to the controller that powers uh, this, uh, this screen. So this is the, the context controller. Oh, let me resize that a little bit correctly. Um, and if I scroll down, we have the index method here, we have the edit method here, and in the update method here, we have a form uh, request. And if I open this up, you can see that this form request has uh, yeah, all of the attributes of uh, my contact model. So this is the first time that we see a list of attributes. Now, this application, it also has an API, so let's go to that. So just add API here, and I can see uh, Aaron's details here now as uh, JSON. And of course, if I uh, do the ID away, I get the list of, uh, of all of the uh, addresses here. So let's see, uh, let's take a look at that controller. And if I take a look here, then you can see that this API controller has an index and a show method, and they both use the contact resource. And you can see that we have the same list of uh, properties here. Okay, let's go now to the view that powers uh, the, uh, the HTML representation of the form here. So we're using uh, React here, but not the, we're not using full uh, type uh, script here. We're using something called JS Docs, and it's just an easy way to, to just type stuff. So we say that the contact object here, it uses this definition of contact data. And let's take a look at contact data here. So I've manually typed uh, this one. And you can see that we have the same properties here again. And this is just a simple example. We have like only a couple of uh, attributes here, but imagine that you're doing this for something that has yeah, a, a whole lot more. Um, now, why are we using this TypeScript definition? I forgot to say that. Uh, that's because uh, we want to have like uh, auto-completion on uh, all of, uh, of the things so we we're sure that it works. And should we use TypeScript that we get errors if we use non-existing stuff? Okay. Let's start uh, using Laravel data and replace uh, uh, all the, the things where we use that, that list of attributes. Now, to save us some time, I've already um, installed the package into this application, and I've already created my first uh, data object. So a data object is nothing more than a plain class that extends our data class, where you just uh, add the uh, properties that you want uh, as, yeah, as regular in a uh, plain PHP class. Okay, let's start using this, uh, this data object. So here is the controller that um, shows the for, uh, that, um, that is going to uh, handle the update here. So I'm going to replace this with the contact data object. So this becomes contact data. And a data object, it can be transformed to a lot of things, to JSON, to other kinds of data, but we are going to use the array representation here. And by the way, because this is now a regular object, you just have auto-completion on, uh, on this as well, so you can just uh, uh, reach out to the properties if you, if you need them. And let's maybe also go to the request and just take all out of the rules because we want to have validation uh, on here as well. 
let's make it uh, static. So we uh, know those rules as well. So this should, should uh, just work. And if I remove this, this is, uh, field is required. But you actually don't need uh, these, uh, these rules because those rules can be inferred with the properties here. Let me show that to you. So let's remove this and try it again. And the name field is still required. Why is it required? Because the property here is required. If I want to make that optional, I just, just, just make that property optional, and now I can save it without uh, mentioning a name here. Let's make it uh, required again and add the name again, like that, and it still just works. Now, these are just the, uh, yeah, this, is, this works for required, but there are a, uh, are a lot of other rules as well. And this is kind of funny because uh, I really liked what Caleb uh, was showing with, with rule. And you know what? We have had like rules attributes uh, for, for two years now. So we have <laughs> here a uh, rule. So I can just add a rule here. Uh, and I should put this on, uh, on email. So here you can just add any uh, rule that, uh, that Laravel has. And if I remove this add now, we uh, should uh, have that validation going on. So here you can add any rule. And we went a little bit further for like the common rules. We have a separate attributes. So if you want to have this like an email, we have the email attribute and this should, uh, should yeah, still give that validation error. So that's, that's how that works. So we've now just replaced our uh, form request with the contact data object. Okay, let's, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So let's go to the API controller here. And we use that contact resource here, but we're going to use our contact data object here. So I'm going to replace this by contact data, contact data like that and it also has a collection method and we're going to replace this also with contact data and we are going to use the from method which uh, is uh, a smart method so if you can if you uh, give it a model it will just do the right thing for you and let's see if that works so we're going to go to the uh, API here and I'm very happy because it just works and we're using our data object uh, here now and also the list uh, just works. Now, if you want to customize uh, this, uh, this a bit, you might think, yeah, I, if I don't want to have address, uh, I just remove address and it will not appear here. But you can't do that because you lose the, the validation uh, on that. How can you do, do that? Uh, how you can you omit something here? You just call here uh, accept and the Laravel idea plugin also has auto completion for this so it knows all of the properties here so you get auto completion so if you don't want to have like the address uh, show up here um, oh this is uh, I should have the detail then you do it like that so here the uh, the address is gone and we have lots of uh, convenience methods on this like uh, also accept uh, when that if you, um, yeah, here you can just add a conditional and here you could check like if the authorized user uh, is an admin, then it can, um, uh, yeah, then you don't show the address. That's a little bit, a uh, little bit of a bad uh, example, maybe when it's not uh, an admin. We also have like the reverse uh, methods of this. So we're two down. We replaced like form request, we replaced the, um, um, the API resource. Let's now go over to, uh, to the TypeScript definition. So the TypeScript definition here is in this, uh, in this file and I manually typed this, uh, this myself. So I can just plainly remove this and uh, let's open up the console. If you um, install Laravel data, you get this, uh, this nice artisan command, TypeScript transform. And what that will do is that it will scan your entire project for all data objects and it, trans it will transform it to TypeScript for you. So like this. And if I refresh this, then we have this TypeScript definition back. So, and this is, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And this is actually pretty nice because now we are 100% sure 
that our backend data definition matches up with our TypeScript definition. There's no room for error because it's, it's automated. So whenever we use this data object on our, uh, on our front end, we know that it's correctly mapped to everything that we have in the back end. So there are a lot of mistakes that this will, uh, that this will avoid. Um, you also saw that we uh, namespace uh, those data objects here. So uh, you should also update uh, this one here, app data, contact data, and this should uh, still just, uh, just work there. So yeah, we've now um, replaced all of the yeah, attribute lists in these objects by a single data object. So I think this is, uh, this is pretty, pretty nice. This is much more maintainable. And like I said, this is just a very, very simple example, but this really shines in uh, bigger projects. Um, and I'm going to show you um, some code uh, from Flare, where Flare is a big inertia uh, Laravel application. Uh, where we use the Laravel data extensively. Um, before heading into the source code, let me just give you like a quick whirlwind tour of uh, Flare for like half a minute so you know what I'm talking about. So this is just locally see the data. So in Flare, uh, we have projects. Uh, those projects, they contain uh, your errors. And if I open up an error, you see the details of the error. Um, and yeah, you might think, hey, I've seen this layout before. Yeah, that's because the layout is the same as Ignition, which is the name of Laravel's uh, default error page. And in fact, we use the same uh, front-end components to build this interface than there are in Ignition. Oh, are you all right? Is it cheer? Okay, he's laughing, so I guess it's, uh, it's okay. We can, uh, we can continue. Um, okay, let's go back to the uh, project here. And let's add a project. And you can see here that we uh, uh, need a couple of attributes uh, or a few values for this in order to create a project. Let's go to the source code of Flare for this and take a look at the controller that, uh, that powers this. So here we have a project controller with an index and uh, also the store method. And you can see that in the store method, we don't use a request object, but we use a data object. And in that data object, you can see us uh, using uh, the validation, uh, using uh, the Laravel data native way uh, to do this. And this is, um, uh, the, uh, why, why I want to show you this is because we use uh, here Laravel data just for the validation and for the conversion to, uh, to TypeScript and not for API resources. So if you create a data object, you can do it for like smaller use cases uh, as well. Now, let me open up the structure of, uh, of the project here. Uh, Flare is uh, using domain-oriented uh, structure here, which means that we identified like the big concepts in our application and moved all of the code that is related to a concept together. So all of the code that powers everything around projects is in domain project. And in each domain, we have a data um, directory here. And here you see uh, project data, and this is like a big data object that contains everything uh, of, um, uh, related to a, uh, to a project. And you can see there are more things uh, going on here. I want to highlight, uh, for instance, uh, this one, that we can have nested data objects. So um, here we say that a project can have multiple guests, and each guest uses a data object uh, of its own. So let's take a look at the TypeScript uh, definition uh, variant uh, of this. So I'm generated, and here I'm going to type project data. You can see the representation uh, here again. And if I hunt up guests here, you can see that we converted uh, that project guest data object also to the TypeScript definition. And yeah, just to show you that um, that TypeScript conversion is pretty nice. This is like 900 lines of, uh, of TypeScript definitions. Let, let's just remove that and try to generate that again. I hope it works. Uh, TypeScript uh, transform. And hopefully, yeah, after a few seconds, we just wrote yeah, 106 uh, types and convert it to TypeScript, which I think is, uh, is quite nice. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's showcase one more thing or highlight one more thing here. So a thing that the TypeScript Transformer can also do is it can handle uh, native enums. So um, a project in Flare uh, can be used for a certain technology, and we support Laravel, PHP, JSC, React, and Vue, Vue stuff. And if I go to my TypeScript definition here, um, if I uh, hunt for technology enum, ah, here I can just click through it, then you can see that we convert that correctly to a TypeScript definition as well, which I think is, is, uh, is pretty nice. So yeah, I can talk a lot more uh, features about this, but I only have limited time. Um, I want to show you a quick preview of something that, uh, that we've been working on. So everything that I showed now is already in uh, uh, Laravel data in the, uh, in, the latest, uh, in the latest versions. You can already use it today. I don't have a fancy launch script because we already launched it like two years ago. Um, <laughs> but let me show you something that, uh, that my colleague Ruben has been, uh, been working on. Yeah, thanks. That's, uh, that's good for the atmosphere. <laughs> okay, let's get them pumped. All right, let's um, check out the Laravel Data v4 branch and let's do the composer install to, uh, to showcase some of the stuff here. So yeah, um, let's go to the, again, the TypeScript definitions here. Let me just hunt it down this way. And in this branch, I already just removed uh, everything that we have here. And let's see what happens if we um, uh, run the TypeScript uh, command here. So TypeScript transform. All done. Let's refresh this. And you can see, let me format this a little bit, that there is a lot more now by default here. So what we're doing here is that we scan every route in um, the Laravel application and make a TypeScript uh, definition of that. So you can see here uh, all of the controllers, all of the actions, and also all of the parameters uh, that it has. And we also write a uh, nice little function uh, called, um, oh, I should hunt, function, function action. A nice little function, the action helper, and it uses like the same uh, signature as um, the uh, Laravel uh, action helper, but yeah, this one is for the front end, and we fully type that using all of the definitions here. So if I go to edit uh, JSX here, and let's for instance uh, um, uh, say that we want to have the URL of the, uh, of the, edit, of the edit screen, you could do it like this, so uh, contact or edit uh, contact URL. You can use that uh, action uh, helper. And the nice thing, because we typed everything, is that you can just now start typing and you have auto completion on all of your routes in the front end. Isn't that, uh, isn't that nice? So, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Big applause for Ruben because he actually made this. Uh, so, um, in Laravel, this should be uh, a tuple, right? With, as a second parameter, we want to uh, have the method here. And the nice thing here is that, yeah, we have all the completion on all the methods in the controllers as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. And we also have all the completion on all the route parameters that are in this route, so you can't really make any mistakes here uh, anymore. So this is, this is nice, right? And if you forget like, what does this control uh, have, you can just click through and you go immediately to the, to the definition here so you know what's, uh, what's possible. So yeah, this is something coming in, uh, in V4. I just want to give you like a quick preview of that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so let's go back to the slides. Um, let's start closing up. So, Laravel Data is a package that can uh, allow you to make rich data objects. And the main use case is that you uh, only have to define a data structure only once. It can replace API resources and form requests. And it really shines when you're working with something like Inertia and TypeScript and you want to have like automatic TypeScript definitions as well. There's a lot of things that I didn't demo, just in the interest of time. Uh, we can have optional properties. We have uh, lazy loading of properties, so it, uh, it plays really well with the lazy uh, features uh, of inertia. Uh, it can create data objects using uh, incoming API um, 
uh, request uh, results. Um, all of the default behavior is, is configurable, like all of our packages, we have always a big emphasis on that people can customize it uh, to your needs. And you can really do a whole lot more uh, with this package. If you want to know more, we wrote extensive uh, documentation on this, and you'll find it uh, on our uh, company website. So you can use Laravel data for everything. Um, you can um, just replace yeah, every form request or API resource with it, or you can just use it for like smallish uh, things. But I think you shouldn't um, discard the Laravel defaults. Form requests are still a very nice way of going about validation. The API resources are still uh, very nice. If that works for your project, if your project isn't like a massive project that we work on, don't discard the Laravel defaults because they're uh, very good as well. Uh, just talk with your team, see what uh, fits uh, your project and make your own informed decision on this. Don't just start replacing everything because uh, I showed you uh, this demo. Um, like I've said, we're currently working on V4, uh, which has uh, some cool new features like that action helper. And we're also streamlining all of uh, the current uh, use cases. And we think we'll have that ready uh, by the end of this year. Now, I want to uh, tell you one more thing. So yeah, like Nuno, I want to have this slide uh, here as well. Um, we're working uh, on a new course called uh, Full Stack uh, Artisan. Um, yeah, thanks. And uh, what will be in this course? Well, uh, we will talk about building advanced reactive uh, user interfaces. And it's basically all of our experience bundled uh, that we know about uh, building a full stack large Laravel app. And this course will use uh, uh, Laravel data v4 extensively, and it will come of the form of text videos, and it will also include a fully built Laravel application. And this is not like a dummy application, like a toy application. It will be something that you can actually use. And yeah, of course, you can learn from the source code as well. And we think this will also be ready by the end of this year. If you want to have updates on that, just join our email list at uh, fullstackartisan.dev. Um, we'll uh, probably mail some example content uh, even before the full uh, course is uh, launched. That is uh, all that I have for you. I hope that you liked it and that you enjoy uh, the rest of uh, the conference. Thank you. Nice job. Another great spotsy package. So I, I, have, I have two questions for you. The, okay. the audience is coming through. The first okay. question, um, I noticed a lot about TypeScript inertia. Do you think this could work with something like Livewire's new forms that were launched literally like five minutes ago? So if you don't have an answer, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, put me on the spot here. Yeah, yeah uh, you can use this with uh, uh, Livewire v2 for sure. Okay. There's like a little chapter on there in the, in the docs as well. So it has value there, there. And I think in v3, we'll probably start experimenting with how we can do the best. Okay, it's been out well. for 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So, I'll, yeah, I'll go absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. The second question is from Al, and he's he's wondering how do you manage at your agency open source courses, products, clients? How do you all think about managing all of these things that you do? Uh, the answer could be like a talk in itself. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, uh, let let me address the open source part. So how we manage that is that everybody at our company gets like uh, dedicated time on uh, working on open source. Oh, nice. And yeah, if you do that regularly, yeah, that amounts to something. And uh, me, I, me, myself personally, and some of my colleagues really like to do this. We, so we do some in our free time as well because it's, it's fun to do. Yeah. And if you do that like consistently, after a, after a while, it starts building up to something. Well, so. y'all are very prolific and very talented. Y'all give it Thank up you. for free. Thank you. Thank you.